So, you know, I wasn't, uh, you know, very old when uh, reform started. So I remember the pre-reform era, uh, basically from my time in uh, school and, and college. And the overwhelming impression really was that India was a country of want. India was a country of shortages. Uh, it was the sort of place where if you had an uncle or a cousin come visit from the UK or the US, you would want them to bring you a pair of jeans, or you'd want them to bring you a shirt from Marks and Spencer, or you'd want uh, cheese. Like every little thing was hard to get hold of. It was a place of want. It was a place lacking in confidence. It was lacking in choice. And I remember those years as essentially being uh, years of drabness. And the sense one would get as an Indian when one traveled overseas uh, was uh, even that was kind of limited because you had to go and you were given a tiny amount of foreign exchange and the whole idea of you know holding a few currency bills that were in dollars or traveler's checks or whatever seemed like such a big thing. So it was a completely different world then. So 91 is of course this great moment in India's economic history. I just remember for instance that there was but there used to be a TV show in the 1980s, I think it was called Thought Tracks, and this was something which was just a few like short uh, MTV videos. And I remember that I was a teenager then and just, you know, waiting all week to watch these four or five music videos because there was such a paucity of entertainment. There were so few choices. And it would seem completely ridiculous to someone growing up in India today where the choice of entertainment is essentially limitless, uh, but in every possible way, things were constrained. Everything was seen through a prism of uh, shortages. I remember we got a car, one of the first few Maruti, uh, Maruti 800, and the Maruti 800 we got was called, uh, was a deluxe car. And why was it deluxe? Because it had seat belts. So it had an air conditioner, which never really worked, and, well, or worked didn't work so well. It, it is the moment. 1991 is to India what 1979 was for China and Deng Xiaoping. Uh, but the difference is that India's reform program has much been much more fitful. It's been much more stop and start. It hasn't been as sustained. We haven't had the kind of depth of political commitment for deep, far-reaching reform. There's been a strong consensus on weak reform, as they say in India. But what we need is if not a strong consensus on strong reform, at least a weak consensus on strong reform. And we haven't got there yet. In general, I would say that uh, if you had to sort of sum it all up, uh, the state still plays too large a role in the Indian economy. Right? It, the, the Indian state has not retreated from the commanding heights to the extent that it should have 25 years after reforms began. Uh, of course, things are much better than they were then, but uh, you know, take for instance, an, you know, an airline like Air India. So I flew Air India today from uh, Mumbai to Delhi, and I wanted to pay an upgrade to a business class seat, and there was a seat that was available, but the person over there did not want to sell me that seat because she was worried that some government person might come at the last minute and claim it. And so that tells you everything about what's wrong with the public sector, and there's much that's wrong with the public sector. And so now we haven't uh, seen the kind of political will to recognize that this is a terrible, terrible waste of resources, and the people who are hurt the most by the failure to reform the public sector are the poor.